about to reveal to you is not for the faint of heart. Come on. I'm not working yet, kid. <laughs> there we go. If you're squeamish, be careful as you watch. Okay? Oh, my. I want you to think, and I want you to think about your reaction, your what really comes to your mind as you see these pictures. <coughs> Do these kinds of things fill you with dread? You know, in the next few weeks, <laughs> we'll sit around tables with people that Try our last nerve and get ready for oh, Lord have mercy. stress. What comes to your mind? For the next two weeks, I encourage you to pause. Um, I encourage you to do it because I need it. Um, I've kind of been hoping that this would be a sermon that I get to preach to you, but and that it'll matter to you. But it's a sermon that I need. It's a message that I need. I believe it's time for us. I believe it is time for us to pause. The first half of this for this morning is pause to think and praise. We get caught up in all of the things that go on in life and the pictures that, uh, that we laughably say may fill our hearts with dread and apprehension actually are rough things for some people. Times when we have to be nice to that brother or sister or aunt or uncle that always seems to push my buttons. Um, those lines that seem to get longer and slower. Wonderful stores where they have 40 checkouts and six cashiers. <laughs> not naming any names they probably all do it in one way or another but this is a stressful season for a lot of people but I think it's time for us to just pause to take a pause and let God do his amazing work in us I have no idea what your computer changed my letters to. I like that. I think that's pretty cool. And it, well, it's, it's two scripture passages, so um, they're not up there. It's Matthew. It is Matthew. 11. Something told me I should grab my notebook where I put all of that. We, we have it. You do, I don't. No, I've got it if you need it. <laughs> yeah, the problem is I don't always put all of them on here. Mm. In Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, toward the end of that chapter, we get kind of an amazing invitation from Jesus. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, I don't always do this, but I want to read that again out of another version. I don't always do that for you, but this particular passage is the first, the first passage that I ever heard, um, heard from this version, and it just, it just connected with me in a wonderful way. See if, uh, see if it connects with you. All right. I'll get it all worked out here in a second. It helps when you do this stuff ahead of time. Or you don't get messed up in the process. All right, seriously. You don't actually believe that nothing ever goes wrong, do you? I am, it's not there. I've got it. That's really hard to believe. You got it? Well, no, I've got, I've got it. I just don't have it in the version I was looking for. No, I have it in that version. Okay. It's the message, which I don't normally use. I use sometimes as an emotional kind of thing. Those, those verses are interpreted this way. And this is a paraphrase. This is someone who follows God, studies His Word, and studies Him, who has said, as I read this, this is what I see. So it's not always literal, but this is, this is how he reads it, how he interprets it. Are you tired? Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me. And you'll learn to live freely and lightly. There's a word in your Bibles, in many passages, especially in Psalms, but also in Habakkuk in the Old Testament. It's called Selah. Now there's a music group by that, by that title, and they take part of this uh, definition for themselves as well. And I'm getting ready to find out that everything else that I've written here is messed up. Okay. But Selah means, well, various, has various meanings. If you, if you want to get really strict and really, um, really tight with, uh, with the meaning of it, you have to go back to Hebrews, the Hebrews. You have to go back to the Jewish language. And they tell you that they don't know exactly what it means. Because it's an ancient word. And even in Judaism, it's an ancient word. And so, it may be a composite of two words that are very similar. When together they make Selah. It could be one that has a slightly different letter in one place. But the generally agreed upon range of definitions... All work together about like this. Pause and calmly think about it. Pause and calmly think about what's being said or what you've just read. Or pause, lift up, praise. One of the things that I think is important for us 
is that we take the time to think about God and take the time to allow Him to speak into our lives. We run full out. And I've been kind of amazed, even, even with a, a number of our family, some of whom live in residence homes and some of their day is, is set for them and they have a large blocks of time just to do with what they, what they please. They fill all of those moments, just like every one of us do. We fill all the moments that we have with something. But I believe that God wants us to fill our moments with Him. To truly learn to be still and know that He is God. The passage in, uh, in Psalm 46. We're going to read that whole passage this morning. Psalm 46. should probably have this marked in your Bible some way. God. Now it's a perfect starting place for God's people. God. God is our refuge and strength. Mm -hmm. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. <coughs> the word we don't pronounce. To pause and think about what we just said. Where can we go for help and for refuge? God. Where do we find the help to get through what we're going through? God. How about if things are really bad? Like it's an earthquake and things are collapsing all around us. What if it's a tidal wave and things are being swept into the ocean? God is our refuge and strength. God. Is. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So what defeats the plans of God? Loud haters? No. Those who scream? No. They don't defeat the power of God. All of those things that vie for our attention or all of those sources that scream at us things that we should change our mind or think. In the midst of all of that, God is our refuge. Now this is not just ethereal theology. This is practical theology. How do we keep up the schedules that we have when there are so many things to do and we've got jobs and we've got bills and we've got things that have to be done and this has to be done and that has to be done? How do we do it? God is our refuge and strength. And if the people of God don't recognize that and live this way, the world will never recognize it. What's the struggle with the, the Israelite nation? 
They would say things like this. They would even read this or sing it in their times of worship together and would go out and do their things their way, make alliances, work it out themselves, and walk away from the reality that God is our refuge and strength. And when you see in verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God who controls the mightiest army ever. That's what a host is. It's an army. It's an army that doesn't fight with human weapons or limited by human limitations. The army that God commands uses spiritual warfare. And they're not defeated by the plans of the enemy. Let's pick up again in verse 8. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. What defeats the purpose of God? Nothing. That's right. What can thwart the hand of the Almighty? Nothing. What can keep God from doing what God has planned? Nothing. So, why do we fear? Why are we scared? When we serve the God who is completely and ultimately in control. He not only has our best interests at heart, those who follow Him, but He has the ability to do anything. Will He always answer our prayers the way we want Him to? No. Not unless you have the mind that is equal to God. We're reminded in his word when Job asked that type of a question. He said, um, let me ask you a question, Job. Were you there when I thought it all up, when I put it all together? Were you there? Do you know the hidden secret places? Do you know all the processes? Then let's let God be God. Mankind may think we're very wise and intelligent. But when we forget that God is God, we've gone down the path of foolishness. God is God. And He is in ultimate control. <coughs> Know something else? The world is a rough place. And it's going to get rougher. It's going to get rougher because we, we look in Revelation and realize that God is going to bring everything to a conclusion. The final conclusion is that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But before that happens, 
There are going to be some humbling things that happen. Where a humanity that is determined to be wise in their own eyes will refuse to accept or acknowledge who God is. Bad things are going to happen. But we're reminded in God's word, God is our refuge and strength. Does that mean bad things won't happen to us? I wish it did, but it doesn't. It means that he'll be with us no matter what the bad things are that happen. He'll be with us. He'll continue to work in our lives even in the midst of all of the difficulty. And so I chose three words for you this morning. In order to pause and think and praise is going to require a choice. You and I are going to have to choose to do that. Because we have so many distractions in our day and age that we could run full speed through every week of our lives and never take the time to pause, to think, and to praise the one who deserves all of the praise and glory. So the first word is choose. The second word is reflect. Now there are two ways to look at that word, and I'll tell you which way I meant. We can reflect, as the sign says out there, Lord, help us to be a reflection of you. And that's part of what I want us to be, and I believe that God wants us to be. But in order for us to be that, there come times when we're not the mirror of who he is, but we instead reflect on what he's done and who he is. It's not about outwardly reflecting. This is about reflection that is inward, that looks at what God has done and looks at how he has been moving and looks and searches and grapples with the realities to reflect on who he is in order to think and praise. And then the last, the last one, not exactly a word, but it's be overwhelmed. When's the last time the Almighty overwhelmed you? When's the last time when you thought that honestly, truly, completely, no one and no thing was worth the word awesome? Except God. Now I know sometimes we try to limit what we do to reflect on Him. But I believe that for us, as human beings living in this world, in this time, we have become so, so conditioned by our world that we don't see the miraculous in what God does. In 34 years of ministry, I think that's right, uh, yeah. Or maybe more. I have never performed a ceremony to restore a marriage. Ooh, amen. Uh, amen. Come on. Come on. God is doing amazing things. Amen. And we need to sit and ponder and think and reflect. To the point that we are overwhelmed with who he is. This is not about religion. Our world has become so comfortable with religion that is societal. 
that we're good people who do good things most of the time. But you and I are part of something that takes place only by the miraculous transformational power of the Almighty. I spoke to our children of several weeks ago about caterpillars that become butterflies. Science still struggles to understand how that happens. Even though they can pinpoint the things that take place, they don't know all the how. Regardless, with all of our knowledge. But God knew that from the beginning. He designed it. The God that we serve is the God that spoke the world into creation. How many of you have ever flown in an airplane? You ever been above the clouds? Other than when I said it, has it ever crossed your mind? Why do they look that way on the other side? A place where mankind would be thousands of years before they could see the beauty. I don't know about you, but have you ever looked at the inside of a garment? You know, we're human beings. What we do, you know, this looks nice and, and the way that it should, but you turn it over and start looking at the seams in your garment and you see the problems, you see the threads, and you see the ragged edges, and you see the roughness. But when God created the clouds that mankind would look at for thousands of years from the bottom, he designed the backside too. Amen. Something that we would be centuries, millennia discovering. Yes. Yes. Oh, we can we can say that we can figure it all out. I mean, it's water vapor and it works with the atmosphere this way, and they combine this way and make it happen. We need to be overwhelmed. We need to begin to look at, at the beauty that God has created. I picked up a leaf off of the platform this morning. I think I brought it in on the bottom of my shoe. When's the last time you looked at a leaf and thought about the fact that there are millions of them? If you don't believe it, go try to rake your yard right now. There are millions of them, but God has been so creative that he has created each of them uniquely and intricately. This is the God who says, I will never leave you or forsake you. The God who designed the sun. Scientists are trying to discover exactly what it's made of and why it keeps burning, and they've got all sorts of great theories that we can postulate with knowledge that makes us sound like we know it all, but amazingly enough, every so often I see something like, well, we landed on this planet that we knew everything about, and we found something we didn't know. Or we sent a probe toward this planet that we knew exactly what it's made of, and we discovered something we didn't know, really. Because in all of our human wisdom, there is still more to discover about what God has done. Amen. The deeper we can explore in the ocean, the more we discover we didn't know that God had created that we didn't have any knowledge of. When I was growing up, Space was a vacuum. Now they tell us that there are things like solar winds 
And there's actually all sorts of particles out there. Space was supposed to be nothing. But you see, God created it. I'm fascinated by pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope. Absolutely amazing. What we have begun to be able to see, and there's a place, it's kind of funny when you think about it, that the scientists say this region of space appears to be where stars are created. What did mankind have to do with that? Just looked at it. Nothing. Till we see it. This is the God who says, I love you. I care for you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Be overwhelmed that the God who created all that there is knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows the things that make you angry. He knows the things that break your heart. Yes. He knows the things that fill you with joy. And he knows the things that fill you with questions. He knows the things that frighten you. He knows you. And he says, come walk with me. Learn of me. Spend time in a relationship with me. Let me show you how to see with these new eyes. Let me help you to pause and think and to praise. Next week, part two. Pause to get ready. Because something's coming.